Hi everyone, it's Bethany from Madeline Jean Antiques and Restoration. In this tutorial, I'm gonna teach you how to dress up the inside of your furniture drawers, specifically the sides. Can you see what I'm adding to this one? I'm adding these really, really cute pineapples to the side of a vanity that I'm working on. Specifically, this vanity is for my daughter who's eight years old and she's obsessed with pineapples right now. So she wants some pineapples on the inside of the drawers. So when she opens the drawer up, you can see these. So we're gonna add two to each side of the vanity drawers. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to stencil. I know some people get frustrated with stenciling. I know I did when I first started out. I've got some helpful hints so you can get a clean look every time. Let's go. Okay you guys, I'm gonna show you the supplies that I normally use when it comes to stenciling. First things first, before you start painting or stenciling the inside of any piece of furniture that has drawers, make sure the drawers already slide easily in and out. Because keep in mind, if you add a layer of paint, um, it may cause the drawer even more difficulty getting in and out. So just keep that in mind. Make sure that drawer can easily go inside and out, um, and then you'll have an easier time of, once you do apply the paint, that it won't stick even more. So. Um, I just get my stencils. I usually get them at like Hobby Lobby. I've ordered a couple on Amazon, but mostly Hobby Lobby or Michaels because I like actually looking at them, feeling them, making sure that they're of good quality. Some of the ones you can order online are pretty flimsy. Um, so this one here, the pineapple one, I got at Michaels. It's about four inches tall. Um, I also like their metallic paints that they sell there. So my daughter wanted really, really bright gold metallic paint. So this was by Deco Art. It's Americana Decor Metallics. And this is their 24 karat gold color. This is really, really bright gold. So I have my paint. I stencil with these little circular foam brushes. This is the only thing I stencil with. I really do that technique where I just dab, 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 and I find I always get a nice clean look when I lift the stencil by using this type of applicator. Um, I also use frog tape, the green tape. That's what I hold down my stencils with on top of the piece of furniture. I also use wet wipes. You're gonna see why. Um, I'm gonna show you exactly why those are important. And I also have paper plates. This is what I use to first dab the paint on and then I stencil. I never take my paint from the container directly to stenciling. I first dab it off on a paper plate, the excess paint, and then I stencil. This helps keep um, the stencil. With stenciling, I guess my, my best piece of advice is less is more. Unless you're Liberace, more is more, but in this case, less is more, okay? Also, because you'll get that bleed through underneath stenciling. I think that's the biggest complaint with people when they lift their stencil, um, it looks blotchy. It doesn't even look like sometimes what you're even stenciling um, and it starts to bleed. So less is more. So I'm going to show you my technique and hopefully this will help you. I'm going to first show you guys how clean my lines are. I want you to get a close up here of these pineapples. You can see there's no bleeding of the paint. Just want to show you how crisp the stencil looks, and it obviously looks like a pineapple. When I first started out stenciling, some of my stencils came out, I'm like, sometimes with lettering, especially when you're doing letters, sometimes the letters don't even look like the letters you're stenciling. All right, so let's get our first drawer up. Make sure it's right side up. I already made a mistake and did an upside down pineapple that I had to sand off, so let's make sure I got right side up. That is right there, okay. I am going to place my stencil on top. You get it positioned. If you need to measure, do so. Then I use my green frog tape. I love this tape. Really holds my stencils in place. And I tape that down. Your fingertips will most likely get full of paint while stenciling, so be prepared for that. I think I'm probably gonna need to reposition my camera 
So I really want you guys to see this close up. So give me a moment. It's the view I want really close up. Okay, so I'm gonna open up my 24 karat paint. Look how pretty that is. Okay, so I'm gonna dab it in the paint. My little circular brush, you're gonna see I wipe it first there. I do not have much on there. I'm still gonna dab it on this plate. I want the excess off, okay? Remember, less is more, less is more. I'm gonna hold down my stencil here to get it super, super flat. I really can't tape it unless I cut my stencil and I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna hold it. I'm gonna first start with the top of the pineapple and I am lightly dabbing really quickly. See how quick I dab? And I just go all over. Less is more, less is more. All right, I got the top of the pineapple done already. Now I'm gonna do the bottom part. Again, I'm dabbing in the paint, wiping it off, going over to my paper plate, dabbing it some more there, and now I'm doing the bottom of the pineapple. And I do it really quickly, and I do it with some force. I'm not being too gentle. It's really quick, up and down, up and down. Okay, then I stop and I let this dry, I don't know, 30 seconds, a minute, and then I'm gonna go over it a second time. What I think that does, maybe I'm wrong, but what I think it does is enables the paint to dry a little bit, so it kind of builds up a layer, and then once I go and do my second layer, I feel like it, it just catches, the new paint catches on that first layer, and that prevents some of the bleed through. Um, Cause sometimes if you put too much paint on, that's what people think when you do the first layer, it's pretty light and I can tell I do need more in some places. I'm first going to let it dry. Okay. And then I'm going to come back and add a second layer. And that's usually enough where I can see that it darkens and gets into the areas where I think it needs a little more without bleeding underneath it. Now, if you do happen to have, I'm going to try and position my face in here. Um, if you do happen, if you lift it up and you do have um, some bleeding or whatever, there's certain ways you can fix um, a stencil mishap. First of all, if you don't put enough paint on and you've pulled the stencil off, you can always go over with a really, really fine detail brush and add in whatever you missed. Now, if you put too much paint, I apologize, my camera just cut out. It says I am out of storage. <laughs> I gotta start cleaning off my camera, my phone. Okay, so I was in the middle of talking about how important it is to let that first layer dry. I already did that. So I'm gonna go over and do this a second time. Again, lightly dabbing, quickly doing it. Like I said, your fingertips are probably gonna get full of paint when you stencil. Hey, if you aren't getting messy while you create, are you really creating? That's kind of my motto. Okay, so there's my second dabbing of paint. I'm gonna lift the stencil now. And there's my pretty pineapple. Okay, you can see I have really, really clean lines. It didn't bleed or anything like that. Now, immediately what I'm gonna do where the wet wipes come into play here, I need to clean my stencil. And I do that immediately after I pull it off. I take a wet wipe and I immediately get the paint off. Otherwise you build up layers and layers and layers and layers of paint and it is really hard to clean. And I also take it to the back side as well. You'll find that you'll get some paint that collects on the back of your stencil. And you wanna keep that as clean as possible because when you lay it down on the next surface, which is clean, you don't want leftover paint leaving streaks and stuff like that. So I am taking the wet wipe to the back of my pineapple stencil here, getting it all clean so it's ready to go for the next drawer. And I let this dry just for a little bit so it's not wet when I apply it back down. So it doesn't have to be perfect but you can see I get the back of the stencil clean and I get the front of it clean as well. And you can see when I did it on the piece of, piece of scratch paper, 
it actually left a little bit of the pineapple stencil. That shows you how much paint is left over on that stencil. So it's really important as you go, keep cleaning your stencil. Otherwise, it's just gonna build up paint and it just keeps the next sur surface clean that you're gonna place that stencil on. Okay. Okay, here's a close up of what I have done so far. You can see um, how nice the pineapples look stacked on top of each other. So I have some work ahead of me, but you can see how clean those stencils are with the method that I use. And it's such a cute way to dress up the inside of your drawers. So when people open up your refinished furniture, it's just a nice way to just give it a complete look. I'll be adding some really cute pineapple contact paper on the inside of the drawers as well. So this is gonna just complete our pineapple look. Biscuit, say hi! <laughs> and there he goes. Bye, buddy! Hey, boo boo! Okay, everyone, thank you so much for watching my latest tutorial. This one was on stenciling and how to do it the easiest and most effective way. So I hope it helped you, um, my helpful hints. If you guys have any questions, please drop them in the comment section. I make it a point to answer questions relatively quickly um, when I'm not being distracted with this little guy, this is our dog Biscuit, and my two kids. So if you don't know much about me, I am a single mom residing in New Hampshire, and I am a very, very small business owner, and I restore antique and vintage furniture. I do a lot of custom orders, but I also do a lot of pieces that I pick up from um, local thrift stores, and I flip them for profit. And this is what I do for work. I am completely self-taught but I'm always learning, always, always learning within this craft. And I'm sharing what I have learned along the way with people like you that maybe just be starting out um, in this fun hobby, or maybe you are doing it for a business as well. Um, I like helping people and I enjoy teaching people um, some helpful hints on how to restore furniture. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. Um, there's a red subscribe button in the lower right hand corner. Um, if your screen's in a full mode, you should see it. And this is Biscuit Boo Bear. We rescued him almost four years ago and he's the sweetest, sweetest little chihuahua um, when he's not barking at people. Um, but he is. He's, look at him. He's a sweetheart. Oh, you're so sweet. All right. My kids are in my truck waiting for me to take them out for ice cream. So as we always say here at Madeline Jean Antiques and Restoration, we say toodaloo. We'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye now.